Three vampires, all alike in infamy, in fair Glasgow, where we lay our scene. From ancient curses to new debauchery, where delicious blood makes vampiric bites unclean. Yeah, I can't keep that up. I ran a game of a brand new TTRPG called Bloodsuckers. For three players, the session is set in a pub in Glasgow and everyone is horny vampires. Let's go. My name's Rich and this is Renegade Rolls. I'm oddly proud of my misquoting Romeo and Juliet for vampires, but if you're expecting over-dramatic gothic tinged melodrama, eh, you're in the wrong place. We're playing some urban fantasy here where the vampires in this game are bang up to date, they're cool, they're clever, they under no circumstances sparkle. Ugh. In Bloodsuckers, you are a vampire. You died and you made a pact with demons from the void to come back and deal with your unfinished business. You suck blood? and ruin lives, and it's a great idea for a movie. Form a pack, hunt mortals, dance till dawn, make good friends, make better enemies. A werewolf, drink blood until you puke, then drink some more. Burn the system to the ground and make a worse one. You've got your whole unlife ahead of you. Here's a breakdown of the rules in 30 seconds. Bloodsuckers is a fantasy modern type TTRPG where you play as vampires. The GM sets a difficulty by rolling 2d10. Players act by rolling from a d6 pool. Meet or beat both is a complete success. Meet one is a partial success. Fail both and ooh, uh, bad stuff happens. The traits, body, manipulation and insight tell you how many dice to use. The skills tell you any bonuses that you can apply. Psyche is how hot or cold blooded you're feeling. You also need to manage your wounds and hunger. Things go, yeah, bad if these things reach their limits. Story time. You meet in a tavern. At least some of you remember when places like this used to be called taverns. Nowadays it's a pub, a bar, a nightclub. The Circle opened a few years ago as one of those yeah, default upmarket bars in Glasgow, where the Prosecco and the cocktails outnumbered the beers and the whiskey. You, you hellraisers you, changed all that over the course of a couple of years. First one of you got a job behind the bar and then the former owner vanished. Let, let's say vanished. Now it's yours, a place where the ostracised and the weird of so many subcultures can feel safe and the occasional stag and hen party, let's say, vanishes. Tonight there's trouble, the police are out the back and they've got a warrant to search the place. Something I love about indie TTRPGs is that I'm starting to find them everywhere. I came across Bloodsuckers not through any promo or big announcement, but from a very articulate rant by its creator Rachel Kay on Mastodon, the nichest of niche social networks, which is full of indie creators whose voices have a habit of being drowned out elsewhere. It's also full of my kind of people, full of LGBT folks and people with very strong opinions about different Linux installs. To my shame, I've not played or run nearly enough mechanically similar systems in order to say, oh, if you like this, then you're bound to love Bloodsuckers. The mechanics of graded levels of success is something that we see in Powered by the Apocalypse systems as well as in Daggerheart. This mechanic means that the GM has a bit of extra work to do when asking for a roll, as it's not just a binary pass or fail, but there are more possible outcomes attached to every single roll. For new GMs this takes a bit of getting used to, but it hones your improvisational skills massively. The setting and associated law really made this system for me. The digital download comes with a setting zine guide called Fanging and Banging, which is an in-world booklet full of story, character and adventure hook ideas. I love the lo-fi style and the fact that there are printer and eyeball friendly versions of the core book and character sheet PDFs as part of the download. My group found the core mechanics super simple and the mix of creating d6 dice pools and modifiers was really intuitive. It felt well balanced against the 2d10 for the GM rolls. It could be frustrating if the GM happens to roll high on a roll that a player doesn't have many dice in, but we didn't come across that in our session as frankly I rolled that improbable succession of ones. We played it as a one shot and as a group we felt there were just too many mechanics to pick up and play in a single evening, so we didn't get to the blood powers or messed with any of the mechanics involved memories, but the game is meant for longer form play, and with more time to explore the characters and their unholy abilities, I'm sure we would have used everything that Bloodsuckers has to offer. One point of confusion we did have was around the manipulation trait. According to the rules, it's an agility or dexterity type stat that you might see in other systems, but at first glance, when a player literally wanted to manipulate an NPC, that seemed like the stat to go with. We went with it and no harm was done, but later we realised that we should have used insight, probably with the coercion skill. Our story centred around our sexy vampires, trying to track down a missing person who unironically call themselves Vlad. 
After grudgingly letting the police into the bar, after variously trying to hit on them, the group then looked at some security footage. They discovered that Vlad had disappeared in a flash of white light, right in the middle of the small dance floor. When they went to investigate the scene, they saw scorch marks on the ceiling in a weird pattern. At this point, a locust appeared, a demi-species like the vampire, but made entirely of hatred and spite. Some combat ensued which was narrated with both style and panache by my players. Once the locust was defeated and it turned into a weird pile of ugh, ick, the Unusual Crimes Unit rocked up. In the book, they're a wing of the FBI, but I made them a bit more international. We ended with them saying that poor Vlad had created one end of a portal to who knows where, and that our deeply unheroic heroes could keep their bar and be custodians of this new portal. After I gave the players a chance to describe their closing words, I added a delicious, oh delicious little post credit sting. The mind's eye takes in the bar, the police and our damn sexy vampires, before settling on the shape of the portal. It follows the intricate lines and curves and is suddenly rushed into a swirling morass of geometry. The lines settle again to reveal the scene on the other side. A colossal subterranean space lit with great iron braziers. On every surface, floor, walls, roof, there are similar portal runes in a myriad of configurations. At the edge of the firelight, a massive dark shape shifts ever so slightly and moves towards the newly glowing portal. For me, Bloodsuckers is a refreshing break from my usual fantasy TTRPGs. Whenever I play or run modern fantasy games, I always have a blast, though I find the world building challenging. To solve this, I based our session somewhere I know well, but my players didn't. Glasgow, home of all, all manner of weirdness, where I have a feeling vampires could live entirely unnoticed if they wanted to. This is a handy tip whenever you're playing something modern, just borrow from your hometown and rename things if you want to keep a bit of mystery from your players. You are going to get a lot from Bloodsuckers if you have a group that enjoys the social and narrative side of TTRPGs. The combat is super intuitive, though it's not really the focus of the game. That honour belongs to the interactions between the characters and the world that the GM makes for them. The rules and character creation system really do support the story-driven gameplay and don't impose any restrictions on what the characters can do. Basically, if you need horny vampires in your life, which face it, we all do, Bloodsuckers is a damn good time. If for some strange reason you're looking for a game that does not involve sexy vampires, then well, I've still got you covered. Grit is a rules-like, darkish fantasy TTRPG with amazing artwork designed with one-shots and short campaigns in mind. Daggerheart is pretty much the opposite, leaning towards epic long-form campaigns. I'll see you there or at a table near you, rolling an improbable succession of ones. Cheers!